Welcome back everyone. Well, it's been quite a while, but I finally got through making a new video featuring my all new all-in-one RV controller box. This is an all-inclusive device for the camera system, the lighting, the controls, and even a few other gadgets. Along with that, I constructed a new tether and even included a metal detector to my ROV. Also, I was able to mount the screen of the fishing cam onto the lid of the control panel. And so, I got myself a 19-inch 4HE mixer case for DJ equipment, which you can get pretty much anywhere online, and installed a blank aluminum plate about 2 millimeters thick. And then I just went to work on it. I installed all the uh, hardware components, just like in all the previous videos and designs, but I will also go into more details about them in just a minute. And since the lid of the case is detachable, I had to install a makeshift metal bracket to improvise a closed hinge. That way the lid stays attached to the case at all times. And here's the result. <laughs> This is an overview diagram of what is going on behind the plate. Let's start with the power. Since I installed three large 1100 gallons per hour bilge pump engines on my ROV, drawing up to 5 amps each, I installed a power pack for each engine. Here in the top right hand corner you see two power packs in conjunction to power the main thrusters. The voltage of the power pack is indicated by the blue voltmeter just underneath the battery pack followed by the power on button for the controller box and underneath you see a 10 amp fuse. Now these power packs again are equipped with an individual on and off switch for safety reasons. On the other side of the case there is a third power block for the vertical thruster and also the lighting system and the metal detector of the ROV. The next power feature is a voltage regulator fit for the 5 and 10 amp current systems for the two different power sources feeding the engines. Here on the very far right you see the rather large regulator for the 10 amp horizontal thrusters. And from the previous projects here is the 6 amp regulator on the left. All this regulated power goes to the relays in the center. Once again this is very tricky. For the actual wiring, I strongly suggest my other video on wiring your ROV controller step by step. I mean, here you can only see a horrible jungle of cables, but believe it or not, it works. And it's really not that complicated as it might look. Just check out the other video. Along with that, you'll see how to wire up the joystick to the relays, and also the push buttons here in red and blue for the diving and surfacing functions of your ROV. Now once you manage to wire up those six relays in order, the outgoing power has to go into the tether. And for that I used this 9-pole plug with the rubber cape. So now let's go on to the new tether. The tether consists of a large 7-pole cable for the engines, two thin wires for the lighting system and the metal detector, another set of wires for the audio signal of the metal detector, and finally the cable for the fishing cam. Now to keep all this metal afloat, I purchased a whole bunch of fishing net floaties and cut them to size. Why? Well each one of them has a floating capacity of 200 grams each. So that's a bit too buoyant and so I made them smaller and attached some stainless steel screws to keep the parts together and also to adjust the buoyancy if needed. And then finally I wrapped everything up with simple plastic cable sheathing along with a few extra self-made floaties inside the sheathing. Again, for those details, be sure to watch my other video on tether projects on my channel. Now let's go to the details of the video system. For this, this is what using a fishing cam separately on my ROV looked like. The screen was installed in a small separate case with an upright lid. 
making it very hard to see the actual screen and also making the handling of the controller box along with the video case rather uncomfortable. So disassembling the screen from the Yoyo case is quite simple. All you need is a screwdriver. By doing so you release the cradle of the screen inside the LED and after unscrewing everything you can just pull it out. There. Boom. Ironically, it seems like the cradle seems to be designed for just this purpose. The screws in the Yoyo lid just broke through the frame of the cradle, but if you jimmy the screen out of the cradle with a thin plastic card like so, you'll find that there are pre-cut holes in the back screaming out, install me properly! And so that's just what I did. Got a couple of small screws which are not long enough to penetrate through the lid of the new case. Just put them right here into place where they belong, obviously. And placed it where I wanted it to be, approximately in the center of the lid. Now the uh, inner insulation of the lid makes it quite easy to, you know, just puncture them through and to hold them in place. And then just screw them in. Tuck the screen back in. And that's all you have to do. It's that easy. Installing the power pack of the camera was a little more challenging. First I cut two holes into the aluminum plate for access of the switches and to monitor the battery voltmeter. The actual unit is installed between the aluminum plate and a wooden plate kept in place by two threaded rods. It's a bit shaky of course but it works well and keeps the control unit snug in place to operate it. Also, the cables go where they're supposed to. So this brings us to the last gadget on this controller. A double pole, double throw switch can operate two different systems. Now I used to just operate two different lighting systems with it, but why not try something else? So I got a do-it-yourself metal detector kit. Really, really cheap little suckers for about four bucks each with the simplest basis of electronic circuitry, but they actually worked for a while. I mean, cheap circuit boards like these do function, but they are very, very t poor in terms of stability. And to make things worse, the box in which I installed them leaked. The water was not that much of a problem, but when I finally sealed the detectors in with epoxy resin, they sort of st started working the other way around. Making, uh, meaning they give out a constant signal and a piece of metal actually suppresses the lighting and the audio signal. Kind of like a smoke detector that is constantly ringing its alarm and only smoke can make it shut up. And since this audio signal is, is rather annoying, I installed a switch to begin with because I did expect problems with this thing in the first place. So nonetheless, this, uh, there was some success along with it, and it was great fun building it. And it also shows how versatile this entire project can be. Obviously, I'm going to disassemble this metal detector at some point to replace it with some other electronic device, which can be run at 12 volts using the on-off option of this uh, switch. And if you have any ideas on what I should be using it on, just leave a comment. That would be fine. Thank you.